I've created an MP3 player, controlled, using Raspberry Pi Pico, as well as being used to play MP3 music. This can be used for PA announcements, model railways, messaging your teenagers, or anywhere else you could use a pre-recorded message. The design is based around the DF Robot DF Player Mini, an MP3 player mounted on a PCB, just a little bigger than the microSD card holder. It can be powered between 3.2 and 5 volts, can be controlled using physical switch buttons or from a microcontroller using the UART serial connection. Here's a representation of the breadboard design. This is wired up for both the simplified control using the buttons and a UART connection to a Raspberry Pi Pico. For the buttons, there are two ways of wiring up the buttons. There are two analog pins which can be used with switches and different resistor values to configure 10 buttons to each pin, giving a total of 20 buttons. This is the simplified way which just allows for four buttons instead and these just use buttons connected down to ground. On this simplified way they are used for next which is also the volume down on one button previous, which is also volume up on the next button, and then segment one and segment five on the other two buttons. The buttons were used for testing on my board, but won't be used now that I've got the Pico connection working. So I'll be taking those off, but they were just useful during that testing stage to make sure that my MP3 player was actually working. The real aim is to fully automate this with the help of the Raspberry Pi Pico which uses a two-wire UART connection. The yellow wire goes from port GP4 on the Pico, which is configured as a UART transmit on the Pico, and UART receive on the MP3 player. The green goes from GP5 on the Pico, which is configured as UART receive on the Pico, going to UART transmit on the MP3 player. The power for the MP3 player is taken from the 3.3 volt output on the Pico, See my other video, Power to the Pico, for more details about that. The speaker I used is a mini speaker, which is really designed for use in a model railway locomotive. You could use a larger speaker, or you could use a powered speaker if you wanted a louder output. So far so good, but the problem comes that the library is designed for an Arduino, and not the Raspberry Pi Pico. The library is created in C. Whilst it would be possible to create a C port to the Raspberry Pi Pico, I instead decided to create a MicroPython version of the library, which I've also released on GitHub. The library is not directly comparable with the DF Robot version, and it's not feature complete, but it does have most of the features that I expect most users would want. You just want to download the software and get started yourself, then feel free to skip forward to cross the next chapter. But before you do, I thought I'd share some of the challenges I'd faced but first, a bit more about how I created the software. The problem is, when we switch back to the source code provided, it's lacking any comments. In the main C++ file, there's a header, but then there are over 500 lines of code with only four inline comments across the entire file. Not enough to explain how it works. There are some examples included which do have some more comments, but they don't explain how the library works, which is what I needed. There's also a bit of information on their website, but that is also lacking critical information. For example, whilst it explains there's a checksum within the serial data section, it just says that it's an accumulation and verification, not including start bit dollar. I assume that they're meaning dollar s, but it turns out that the checksum involves a sum of all the other parameters and then taking two's complement. She actually found out by manually working through the source code to understand what was going on. And there's no mention of why the version information has a value of decimal 255 or hex FF, but apparently it does. So to actually figure out how it worked and the data I needed, I connected it to an Arduino and added some debug code to show me what was being sent between the Arduino and the MP3 player. Based on that, I was able to create some of the C library into MicroPython for the Pico.
The library is far from a direct port to the existing code. Here are some of the main differences. Firstly, this is based around the MicroPython UART library. This gives much less control than is available in C. Instead of checking for the state of the UART connection and being able to see that data has been received yet, the MicroPython code instead relies on sending the value and then waiting a set period of time before reading the data that was sent back. There is some basic error checking that I've put in, but it's less than the C library. I've also put less error checking within the library, although that's more on me rather than the capabilities of the language. For example, I don't check the checksum of the code being returned from the MP3 player. Instead, just check in that the correct number of bytes have been received, along with some basic checks for common return values. However, on the plus side, I've made the code simpler and hopefully easier to understand compared with the C library. I've also helped by adding additional comments, which are liberally added within the source file, so you can understand what's going on. I've used a more Python-like naming convention without using the camel case, which is used by the C library. And just be aware, it's only a partial implementation of the full library. I believe I've included most of the functionality that most users are going to need, but the rest could always be added later if required. So I've put all the source code in GitHub and an explanation of how you can use it on my website. The files need to be stored on the microSD card. It does support a few different audio formats. I'm using MP3, but you could use WAV or WMA instead. The microSD card is formatted as FAT16 or FAT32, also known as VFAT, and the files need to be stored in a directory called MP3. The files then need to be saved in that folder following a naming convention, four digits, followed by the extension .mp3. You can then refer to the file numbers as track numbers. So, for instance, to play track 003.mp3, you would just say play track 3. I understand it's possible to create different folders using digits for the names of the folders. It should then be possible to access the files in that folder using the high byte for the folder and the low byte for the individual tracks. But I didn't need that, so it's not something I've been looking at testing or creating special functions for that, but you could try that by adding an appropriate value for the directory on top of the file name. So the source code has got two files, a demo file and then the library file itself, which is called dfplayermini.py. That just needs to be uploaded to the Pico first. I'm using Thony and I just can choose upload from there, assuming you've already connected to your Pico, and that will upload there. There shouldn't be any need to edit that unless you're wanting to add support for more of the commands. As you can see, there's quite a lot of comments in there and it should be easier to understand than the source code they provide, which is in C. The example file I've created is called pico mp3 demo.py. I'm just going to go through this briefly to show you how you can implement this in your own code. You can see the top line imports the DF player mini class from the DF player mini library file, which is what we've already created. Creates an instance of that class using DF player mini and saves that as player one. It takes three parameters. The first is the UART number, in this case one, and then the transmit and receive GP numbers on the Pico, in this case using GP4 and GP5. These are all taken from the pinout diagram. If you see the pinout diagram says that those could be used with UART one. Once you've created that instance, you need to connect to the player by doing a reset. Uh, the reset effectively just sends that initial signal. We can make sure that we're getting communication and that it's working. And 
when it's successful, it will return a true value, but it may take several attempts, typically two attempts before it gets a true value. So that's why I've put it in this while true loop. It will just keep testing until it successfully connects. Then it's a case of using the, the new player instance and just sending it the appropriate commands by adding the method name and depend upon the command some additional parameters. So for instance, to set the volume, do player one dot set underscore volume and then a value for the volume. And this is a value up to 30. So this is almost halfway. Oh. Select the source allows you to choose the source for this. In this case, it only supports an SD card, although I think it may be possible to connect an external USB. I'm not sure, um, but basically you just need to put SD card there. There are other versions which will have their own inbuilt flash, for instance. And then you can just use dot play followed by the track number. You can see this one will play number one. It's going to wait for 10 seconds and then play track two. There's things like play next, play underscore next will skip to the next track. Use dot pause, dot start, dot stop when you've finished. And as you can see, it's all fairly self-explanatory. You can see all the different method names inside the library file. See, there's also a play underscore loop. If you want to play it on the loop, I think pretty much the rest have been covered. There's previous as well as next. So as you can see, the code to actually interact with the MP3 player is pretty easy to use. As I've said, there is very limited error checking in my code, but each of the methods will return a value. So I've stored it in read value. I'm not actually doing anything with it at the moment. Typically it just sends a true value regardless of what's sent or received, but that could be used for better error handling in future if I wanted to expand on that. I'll be adding details in future on how you can web enable the player using a PicoW and some examples of how you can use it. So please subscribe if you found that useful and leave a comment if you've got other examples of where this could be used. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on a future video.